Treasurers today. Uh, Treasurer, thank you for your time. Will you be talking about fast-tracking infrastructure projects, which the RBA has essentially been begging for? We certainly will be talking about how we can continue this extensive infrastructure pipeline and, where possible, bring projects forward. Uh, there are some capacity constraints, particularly in the big markets of Melbourne and Sydney, uh, and that provides challenges as well as uh, increasing costs of existing projects. But, Laura, you have to recognise that we have the largest infrastructure pipeline in Australia's history, mm. uh, with $100 billion being spent by the federal government over the next 10 years. Uh, and that includes um, groundbreaking projects like a second airport for Sydney, like the Melbourne uh, Brisbane Inland Rail Project, which will create 16,000 jobs on top of what we've do, been doing on the Bruce Highway, West Connex and, and other projects creating thousands of jobs. The argument is that greater stimulus is needed now in the economic environment we find ourselves in. You acknowledge, the stakes acknowledge that when it comes to productivity, you both can't do it alone. So will the Commonwealth be offering more financial incentive to the states to get this done? Well, there's been some talk about a potential asset recycling plan uh, that's been mentioned by the states, but the Commonwealth's position uh, is that the states don't need any financial incentives to recycle their assets. They've shown both a willingness and an ability to do that in the past, and we'll leave them to do that into the future. Mm. Uh, what we will continue to do is to partner with um, state governments on really important projects. So in Melbourne, uh, we put down $5 billion for a airport rail link and so has the state government. Uh, we've been investing in the Monash. Uh, we are putting uh, $2 billion aside for a fast rail between Melbourne and Geelong. And as you know, in New South Wales, Queensland and every state, South Australia, Western Australia um, and Tasmania, uh, we have very extensive uh, infrastructure pipelines. Why did you reject a request for the Deputy RBA Governor to speak to this meeting about climate change? Well, there are other forums where obviously those issues are being discussed uh, as a matter of course, namely the Energy Minister's Forum and the Environment Minister's Forum. Um, what we are focused on here are particular um, particular infrastructure priorities, particular productivity priorities. Well, that would suggest um, that you when don't the think Queensland climate Minister change has anything to do with productivity. Well, when the Queensland Minister wrote to me, um, she wrote about having a new climate agreement and the Commonwealth is not proposing a new climate agreement. We've got our policies. Uh, that, will, uh, that is all about meeting our Paris commitment of a 26 to 28 per cent reduction by 2030 on 2005 levels. The, some of the states have their own renewable energy programs and we cooperate where possible. But we will meet and beat our, our targets as, uh, as we signed up to. Climate change, though, as a whole, is it um, hurting productivity? Is it something that comes into your thinking, either now or in the future? Well, certainly uh, there's a cost to the transition to a lower carbon future. And as a member of uh, the ERC and as a member of Cabinet, um, these are the discussions that we have in, in the context of energy policy and, and, and other relevant policies. Uh, and we continue to talk to, to the states. Uh, but we're not, as a federal government, engaging in a new climate agreement. Uh, and if the states are proposing new revenue measures, namely taxes, then the Commonwealth's not interested. OK, just finally, the Farm Household Assistance Allowance. It was revealed yesterday that more than 200 farming families in Queensland have been kicked off that allowance because it has a cap of four years. I assume the number is even higher in New South Wales. Can you afford and are you reviewing that cap? Well, as you know, Laura, we've just had a review uh, and uh, we accepted the review's recommendations to take it from three years over a lifetime to four years over ten uh, years. And, uh, and so we, we accepted that recommendation and the, the independent panel did not recommend um, something different. What did the independent um, but, you know, panel suggest farmers do when they're still in drought and their four years is, is up and the drought could go on for another couple of years? What are they meant to do financially in well, that time? Well, well, as you know, there are other welfare payments um, that come into play, but the focus, Laura, here is um, how do we ensure that our farmers get the support that they need? And our policies are not set and forget. We're continually reviewing our policies when, with respect to, to the drought, and 
Um, the Prime Minister made, uh, has made visits to that area and made recent announcements uh, about extra funding. David Littleproud and I were recently in Inverell, Warwick and Stanthorpe uh, and we're talking uh, to the states obviously about water infrastructure projects. We've passed through the parliament um, the drought fund which will see five billion dollars provided for drought resilience and not only the farm household assistance package but there's also the money that we're providing to local governments and I heard firsthand from local governments how the money that we're providing is helping to employ local people throughout their, their community. So there's a number of things that we're doing. There are things that we'll continue to do into the future and we'll continue to review our policy settings because obviously this drought is, very, is, is just devastating in the extreme and the people that I met have seen nothing like it in their lifetimes. Treasurer, thank you. Good to be with you. British Prime Minister.